Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Shirley Temple, Claude Rains, and Preston Foster in The Littlest Rebel. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever it takes to make a motion picture star, we've got a whole lot of it here tonight in a very small package. Shirley Temple is making her first appearance in the Lux Radio Theater. Her first appearance in a full-length radio play. It carries me back a few years to the day I watched her on the set doing her first important role. Later, I saw the picture score its first hit. Not at a glittering premiere with milling crowds and bright lights tracing patterns in the sky, but in a studio projection room. Just four bare walls and the toughest audience in the world men and women who make pictures for a living. When it was over, we were all the slaves of an actress, just five years old. For on that afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, a star was really born. Tonight we present Shirley Temple in one of her biggest 20th century Fox hits, The Littlest Rebel. And opposite Shirley, we have two leading men, two, count them, Claude Rains and Preston Foster, both rivals for the lady's heart. Naturally, this is a proud week for us, all of us here. We're proud that this distinguished event is brought to you in this theater by Lux Toilet Soap. And I know you share our pride, because without your help and support, this play and cast would be only a producer's dream. Your part in this theater is just as important as any part played on this stage. And we hope that every day you'll give Lux Toilet Soap the important role in your daily living that it deserves. The Littlest Rebel is a story of the human side of the war between the states. It's about a little girl whose bravery and courage found friends and men of goodwill on both sides. Claude Rains is her father, a captain in the Southern Army. Preston Foster is a Northern colonel. And tonight, Preston has brought his suitcase with him because right after the final curtain, he leaves for Regina and the Canadian opening of Northwest Mounted Police in which he played another soldier hero for me. Now we take you back to the Old South to see a great historic event through the eyes of a child. The curtain goes up on Act One of The Littlest Rebel, starring Shirley Temple as Virgie Carey, Claude Rains as Captain Carey, and Preston Foster as Colonel Morrison, with Lee Whipper as Uncle Billy and Frank McGlynn as Abraham Lincoln. April 12, 1861. Throughout America is heard the first rumblings of a great conflict. And on this day, a gun will be fired at Charleston, heralding the opening of a four-year war between the states. On the old Cary plantation in Virginia, the thunder of marching men has still to interrupt the quiet dignity of its peaceful country life. In the great reception hall of the mansion, the children of the neighborhood have gathered in honor of the young mistress, Virgie Cary, 11 years old today. At the head of the long, glittering table, she reigns supreme. The old colored servant, Uncle Billy, standing at her side, ready to die in her service or to pass another piece of cake to a hungry guest. Everything all right, Miss Virgie? Thank you, Uncle Billy. Everything's fine. Miss Virgie, may I have some of those cookies? Of course you may. Uncle Billy... Serve these cookies to Master Harold. And wipe this chin. Yes, Miss Virgie. Look to me like Master Young Harold got more on the outside than on the inside. <laughs> Will anyone have some more ice cream? Another portion for you, Miss Gladys? No, thanks. I've had enough. Miss Virgie, there ain't no more ice cream. There ain't a single spoonful left. Oh, well, I'll only ask them once. I won't coax. More cake or ice cream, Master Philip? No, Miss Virgie. Nothing more for me, thank you. Would you care for more ice cream, Master Frederick? Yes, thank you very much. Now you've done it, Miss Virgie. Master Frederick, perhaps you'd rather have another nice big piece of cake. No, just ice cream. Oh. Uh, what are we going to do now, Miss Virgie? Give him mine, Uncle Billy. Yours? Yes, I haven't touched it yet. Take it to him, please. Yes. Yes, Miss Virgie. Now, will... Will anyone else 
Heaven, he ain't cold. Oh, yes, he's beautiful, That child of yours is the perfect hostess, Mr. Carey. Look at her. Isn't she lovely? Thanks. She takes after her mother. Oh, Robert, please. Oh, Master Carey, sir. Yes, Tom? Master Carey, that Sally Ann child of mine done just come up from quarters. Say she and Rosabelle and the others got a present for Miss Birch. Well, that's fine, Tom. Master Carey, I done told all those children not to come up here. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Tom. Linda, I think you'd better take care of this. Of course, dear. They're all waiting outside, Miss Carey. I'll tell Virgie. She'll be right out. Yeah. <laughs> now you get up some gumption, Sally Ann, and talk right out to Miss Virgie. What do you mean you scared? All you gotta do is give Miss Virgie the present we make for her. I shivering, Mammy. I shivering all over me. Now you hush. And don't forget to make that speech like I teach you. Here she come now. Hello, Sally Ann. Hello, Rosabelle. Go on, Sally Ann. Say it. Miss, Miss Virgie, ma'am. Yes, Miss Virgie, ma'am. We all done come here to, to wish you a many happy... Uh, 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 happy returns. Yes, and that's it. Happy returns. And we all done made you a doll. And here it is. And, and, and there was more to say, but I didn't forget it. <laughs> you said everything, Sally Ann. Please don't cry. And this is the very nicest present I got, because you all made it with your own hands. Thank you ever so much. Happy birthday, Miss Birdie. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Excuse me. I've got to go in now, and I'll save you all some cake. Miss Virgie, I have her baby birthday. 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 Do you like to dance, Master Philip? Oh, yes, Miss Virgie. And you dance very nicely, Miss Virgie, if I may say so. Thank you, Master Philip. But I hope you'll excuse me if I don't bow very low. My britches are too tight. That's perfectly all right. Just bow as far as you can. Thank you, Miss Bridgie. Yes, sir. Come in, sir. I want to see Captain Carey right away. Yes. Sir. Who is it, Tom? It's a soldier, Miss Carey. I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am, but I have a message for Captain Carey. It's very urgent. For Captain Carey? Oh, just a moment, please. Thank you. Robert, come here. Yes, my dear. Robert, a man just rode up. A soldier. Where is he? Uh, Captain Carey, sir. Yes, I'm Captain Carey. What is it? Fort Sumter was fired upon this morning, sir. The war has started. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, please. You have any orders for me? Yes, sir. You are to present yourself at the armory immediately, sir, with horse and sidearms. And all men of the Richmond Grays report in the city before nightfall. We'll be glad, sir. Send someone down the valley to spread the news. Yes, sir. Then ride north among the river plantations. Yes, sir. War. Oh, Robert. Well, it was bound to come, Linda, but it can't last long. I'll be back in no time, darling. There's nothing to worry about. That's what they told me when my father left for the Mexican War. I never saw him again. Linda, darling. I... I'd better get your things together. Yes, I'll have to leave as soon as I can. And I think we ought to get the children home. The roads may be filled with soldiers before night. We'll be mobilizing. Of course. Tom! Tom, get all the carriages ready as quickly as you can. Yes, sir, Miss Kerr. Master Frederick. That's the last one. Everybody gone, Miss Virgie. Uncle Billy, I don't think it was very polite to chase everybody out of my party like that. Can't help it, Miss Virgie. That man has got to get him home quick. You see, there's going to be a war. A war? Yes, a real war with lots of soldiers and battles and men killing each other with guns. But why? Why, Uncle Billy? It seems like to me, Miss Virgie, that no one knows why. I hear a white gentleman say that there's a man up north wants to free the slaves. What does that mean, free the slaves? I don't know myself what it means. It's funny, isn't it? Miss Clergy! I'm down here by the gate. Miss Carey say you better come in the house now, Miss Virgie. It's getting powerful late. In a little while, Uncle Billy. Ask her if I can stay out just five more minutes. You waiting for your daddy again, Miss Virgie. Who help him get you no sooner just watching the road? Them Yankees that was here last week said there ain't a Confederate soldier around here for miles. Yankees? What would they know? Here they come again, Miss Virgie. They're coming again. Who is? Yankee soldiers coming down the road. 
Better come inside the house, Miss Virgie. I'm not going to run. But there's liable to hurt you. I won't budge. I'm not afraid. I is. I scared something awful. Ain't you even just a speck afraid, Miss Virgie? Of course I'm not. Are you? Well, I hear the white gentleman say that your daddy didn't know what fear is. But if he won't find out, I could tell him now. Oh, what are you afraid of them for? Do you see that man riding in front? Well, watch. What you going to do? I'll show you. Miss Virgie, put away that slingshot. Get me a pebble. Where's a pebble? Please, Miss Virgie, you ain't going to use that slingshot on a Yankee. You can. Watch. Oh, somebody, oh. That'll teach him to come snooping around here. Miss Virgie, you are starting another war. Who did that? Who did it? I did. Oh, well, you're truthful anyway. Who are you? I'm a confederate. Oh, a little rebel, eh? I'm not a rebel. My daddy said so. I'm a confederate. Is your daddy a soldier? He's the best soldier in the army, the confederate army. Is he around here now? Do you suppose I'd tell you if he was? <laughs> no. You've got a lot of spunk, haven't you? I'm not afraid of you. I've noticed that. Nevertheless, young lady, I'm a colonel in this army. <laughs> Yankee army. And it's beneath the dignity of my position to be hit in the back of the neck with a slingshot. So you just mind your manners. Good day. Oh, I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, Miss Virgie, Dixie do! Dixie land will take my stand to live and die in Dixie. <laughs> away! Away! Goodbye, little now rebel. Now the Dixie! Yeah. Open the door, Uncle Billy. It's me. Master Carey. Miss Carey! Miss Virgie! It's Master Carey! Come back! Shut that door and bolt it. Yes, sir. Robert. Oh, Robert, you've come at last. Linda. Daddy. Daddy. Hello, darling. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Robert, it's so wonderful to see you. It's been so long, darling. Here, here now. Are those tears? Tears of joy, that's all. Me too. Look, Daddy. Well, we can't have that. Southerners never cry. No? Then what are those in your eyes? Oh, raindrops. <laughs> On a sunshiny day. Can you stay long this time, Daddy? Not this time either, darling. I've got to get right on again. I'll see if Rosabel has lunch ready. I won't be able to stop for it, Linda. Oh. Well, you can take something along with you. You've got to have something. Are they getting a fresh horse for me, Uncle Billy? Uh, yes, sir. I I'll go see and make sure. They'll have it for you, Daddy. Everybody knows just what to do. We practice it every day. God love you. You're all over dust. Can I polish your boots? No, don't bother. Time's too precious. Just sit over here with me. Let yeah. me look at you. Daddy, are we winning the war? Well, it's hard to say yet. You mean we're losing? No, but don't worry about it. Things are going along. Will it last much longer? I hope not. Do you have to work hard in the war? Well, we all have to do our share. But every time I see you, you're always so tired. No, I'm not tired now. I'm looking at you. I miss you so, Daddy. Do you miss me? Very much, darling. Mother always pretends you're just gone for a little while and that there's nothing really wrong. And then when she's alone, she cries. I've seen her. But she does pretend. That's what matters. We've all got to pretend. I put something in your saddlebag, Robert. It isn't very much. Thank you, darling. I've got to travel light anyway. Well... Oh, do you really have to go so soon? Can't you rest just a little while? I've got to move on while the coast is clear. I have to find out where Sheridan's camping and report to General Lee before nightfall. Oh. Virgie, would you look out the window and see if Tom has a horse saddled? Yes, Mother. Robert, I'm worried about you on these scouting expeditions. If you're caught, you'll be shot as a spy. I can't be shot as a spy. Not as long as I'm in my own uniform. Please be careful. I will, darling. They're bringing the horse up, Daddy. Good. Well, I'm seeing ready, Mr. Carey. We got an old best saddle and weight with the back door. How is she, Uncle Billy? Oh, fine, Mr. Carey, fine, sir. Uh, we've only got two horses left. But they're both good, sir. Two left? Linda. I... I've had to sell or trade nearly all the stock for food. I've kept the horses till the last I thought you might need them. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, you have enough troubles. This is the part of the war we women must fight. They're coming! They're coming again! What's that? That's the car! Hurry! What's the matter, Tom? Yankees! Coming over the hill! Yankees! Robert, go quickly. Goodbye, darling. Don't be afraid. Please be careful. Of course. Goodbye, Virgie, honey. Bye, Daddy. Oh, come on, darling. Let's see you smile. I am smiling. Why, that's only half a smile. Come on, now, a big one. <laughs> this. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, Dr. Kerr, hurry up, please. Coming. Linda, listen. Yes. I'll try to cross the river the other side of the mill. I can hide in the woods till they pass. 
If I get over, I'll fire three quick shots to let you know I'm safe. Keep the Yanks here as long as you can. I'll need all the time I can get. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Daddy, Daddy. Yes, dear? Give my love to General Lee. I will, honey. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daddy. Tom. Yes, sir, Miss Carey. Where are those soldiers now? Just turned in off the main road, Miss Carey. Uncle Billy, get the corn from the barn into the house. Yes, sir. Then hide the silverware in the cellar. Yes, sir. Wait. Where's Master Carey's horse, the one he rode here? We put him in the barn, Miss Carey. Well, take him out. Have Tom ride him to the bottom of the west field and turn him loose. They mustn't see that horse. Well, yes, ma'am, I'll tell Virgie, you come upstairs with me. I'm not afraid of Yankees. Please, dear. Halt! Search yourselves here. Four of you go around the back. The rest stay with yes, me. Yes, Keep your eyes open for food and valuables. But, Sergeant Dudley, we have strict orders against looting. Shut Should up we... and do as you're told. I'm in charge here. Yes, sir. Open up. Open up! Yes, sir. We're looking for a spy. Is there a rebel hiding in this house? No, sir. Nobody at all, sir. Who lives here? Uh, uh, Miss Carey, sir. Married? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Where's her husband? Uh, well, in the sir, army? Uh, uh, Is he? Uh, yes, sir. Where's she? Uh, she ran. I don't know where, sir. Some of you men searched the house. She's hiding someone. If she wasn't, she'd be here. Yes, sir. You. Bring me a drink. We ain't got nothing except some apple cider. Well, bring me that. Uh, yes, sir. Got any food? Food? Uh, no, sir. Ain't nothing at all. Sergeant Dudley. Find anything? Yes, sir. This corn out in front of the ground near it was wet as though a horse had been watered and the saddlebags filled. Uh, this corn ain't been there ten minutes. The sun ain't even turned it yet. Search the stables and rush the men down to the river near the old mill. That's where he'll cross if he gets away. Yes, sir. So there was nobody hiding in this house, huh? Come here, you. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. There's food in the cellar, sir. Food? You didn't know that either, did you? Well, go get it and be quick about it. Come on, miss. Come on. You let go of me. Take your hands off me. Easy now. Easy. I found this kid hiding at the top of the stairs. It's a woman we want. Find her. Yes. Come over here. Where's your mother? Where's your mother? <laughs> All right, little lady. We're not in any hurry. We'll be here for a long time yet. Well, might as well be comfortable. Here. Pull these boots off for me. Pull them off yourself. Did you hear what I said? Now grab that boot. Down there at the heel. Now pull. Pull, no push. Look out, you... I'll show you. Oh, you're shoving the chair over here. Oh. Next time, maybe you'll do it yourself. Come back here. I'll tan your hide, you little... Come here. Come here before I... Let child alone. Get out of my way. Don't you dare touch her, do you hear? Get out of my way. Oh, Are you hurt, lady? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to push you. Don't you hurt my mother. Let him alone. Let him alone. Attention. Sergeant Dudley, Colonel Morrison is here. Morrison. What's going on here? Are you hurt, madam? No. No, I'm all right. Who's in command here? I am, sir. Sergeant Dudley. I might have known it would be you, Dudley. Do you know what he did? He was going to take our corn and our food, and he wanted to hurt me, and he threw my mother down the stairs. You men put that loot back where you got it. Yes, sir. Yes. Lieutenant Harris. Yes, sir. Take this man outside and give him 25 lashes. Investigate the others. If any are guilty, give them five lashes each. Yes, sir. I can't tell you how sorry I am, madam. And you too, miss. Oh, you were crying, weren't you? No, I wasn't. I'm just mad. And when I tell my daddy about this, he'll just go and lick your whole Yankee army. <laughs> I won't blame him a bit. Here, here's my handkerchief. I'll blow. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. Madam, I'm Colonel Morrison. You're Mrs. Robert Carey, aren't you? Yes, Mrs. Carey, a rebel scout is known to be in the neighborhood. I'm sorry to have to question you. I know nothing about him. I happen to know that you do. He's your husband. You seen him today? No. Would you tell me if you had? Would you expect me to? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Colonel Morrison? Yes? We just found a horse in a corral half a mile below. It shows signs of having been ridden hard in the last 20 minutes. That means he changed horses here. Sent five men to the river. Put two sharpshooters on the roof of that old mill. They can cover both banks. Wait! What's that? A godsend. Oh. In that case, I'm afraid there's no longer any necessity for my staying. Never mind that order, Corporal. He's already across. We'll go back to camp. Yes, sir. Mrs. Carey, if you should see your husband again, I'd advise him to stay out of this section. They don't always get away from us. Good day, madam. Good day to you, little rebel. Virgie, did you see his face? He was... Almost glad that Daddy got away. He was... He was nice, wasn't he? 
too bad he's a Yankee. In a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring back Shirley Temple, Claude Rains, and Preston Foster in Act Two of The Littlest Rebel. Did you ever stop to think that everything you say makes a sort of tune? Now, for instance, if you wake up feeling unhappy, you're likely to say good morning like this. Good morning. But if you wake up feeling very gay and happy, you probably say good morning. That sounds better, doesn't it? Now, isn't it true that the woman who wakes up happy in the morning is usually the woman who looks pretty in the morning? The woman whose husband puts down his newspaper to say, how nice you look, and thinks to himself, what beautiful skin. And when you talk about beautiful skin, about the complexion care nine out of ten screen stars use, it too makes a tune. Yes, Lux Toilet Soap. You know, Lux Toilet Soap has come to be a sort of symbol of beauty. Know why? It's because this mild white soap has active lather that removes stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt thoroughly, gives skin the protection it needs to stay lovely. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Littlest Rebel, starring Shirley Temple as Virgie Carey, Claude Rains as Captain Carey, and Preston Foster as Colonel Morrison with Lee Whipper as Uncle Billy. The months drag slowly by, the flame of war rising higher each day, laying fearful waste to home and farm. Directly in the path of destruction, in the crossfire of two armies, lies the Carey Plantation. It's deserted now, for Mrs. Carey, Virgie, and Uncle Billy have taken refuge in the fields. For a whole day, they've watched the shells bursting near their house. And now, with night, a driving rain sweeps down upon them as they huddle close around a lantern. We can't get back to the house tonight, Miss Carey. <coughs> Yankee's already down by the South Field. The house right in the line of fire. <coughs> Mother, the shells are dropping in the yard. What about going down to... Yes. <coughs> to slave quarters. Can we go there? No, ma'am. They're firing there, too. Then we're safer here. We'll wait till morning anyway. <coughs> mother, you're cold. Please take this blanket. I don't need it, Mother. Honest, I don't. <coughs> no. You keep it, darling. Put it up around your throat good and tight. But, Mother... It's all right, dear. I'm not a bit cold. I'm warm, really. Do as I say. All right, Mother. Captain Carey, sir. Yeah? Well, come in. Sorry to disturb your rest, sir. One of your slaves just came into camp. He wants to see you. One of my slaves? Yes, sir. Well, how could he have gotten through the Yankee lines? Well, send him in. Yes, sir. Come in here. Oh, Master Carey, thank the Lord I found you, sir. What is it, Uncle Billy? Mr. Carey says she's awful sick. Sick? Yes, yeah, sir. I was afraid, Master Carey. She keep asking for you all the time. I was afraid. What happened? Well, sir... They fought right in the front of the house, in the slave quarters. And the house burned down, sir. Miss Carey catch her death of cold. She coughed and bad. How long has this been going on? Uh, she was sick for three weeks and getting worse. And living in a cabin that ain't fit for the likes of me. So I thought I'd better fetch you, sir. I've been going from camp to camp looking for you for over a week now. And Virgie, is Virgie all right? Oh, she finds her. Never complain about nothing. Always cheerful. Been a great comfort to Miss Carey. But I was afraid Mr. Carey needs you now, sir. I'll get leave right away. We'll have to take our chances on getting through the Union lines. Yes, sir. I got some logs in the river covered with brush. We can float down past the Union camp and cut inland and cross through the Chickahominy Swamp. All right, come on. We've got to get into the swamp before daybreak. Keep the logs off the bank. We're drifting into the shore. Yes, sir. Sure would be a help if we could see that bank. 
I never did see a dark night like this. And that moon, that moon will only stay behind the clouds. We'll make it. Where did you say that Union camp was? Just below, yes, sir. But maybe a half a mile, maybe less. Were they camped on both sides of the river? No, sir. Only on this side. The one we's on now. How wide is the river on that point? Did you notice? Uh, no, sir. I couldn't say for sure. But it's mostly narrow all the way, like about here. That means we'll have to float right down past their centers. Yes, sir. Pretty close. They could just about reach out and touch us as we go by. If we, we go by. We will. Keep low down on the raft. And pull that brush up over you. Uh, I won't even breathe, my scare. Except I was just thinking, how are we going to pull the raft along if we're laying down? She gets stuck awful easy in the back here. We'll have to take that chance. I'll keep it out as far in the middle of the stream as I can. Uh, look, my scare. There's the camp now. I see the fire. What? Hear that, Masker? Somebody playing the mouth on. It means they're still up and stirring. Maybe not. There aren't many fires burning. Look, sir. Here comes that moon again. They can see us for sure now. Hold the raft back to me. Now work it out in the middle. Hold it. I see a soldier, sir. The one that's playing. He's sitting right on the edge of the bank, sir. It's too late to turn back now. We'll have to go on right past him. Keep it on low. And if he stops playing, shove the raft over to the other bank and run for the trees. Understand? Yes, sir. The minute he stopped playing. Only I wish, I hope he don't stop. Ready now? Yes, sir. Come on. We did it, sir. Right under the nose, Yankee's nose. Yes. He plays well, doesn't he? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're feeling better now, aren't you, Mother? I think so. Yes, dear. Sure. You just stay in bed and don't try to get up. Daddy will be here soon. He'll make everything fine again. You just wait and see. We mustn't be too sure, darling. And then we won't be disappointed if he can't come. Perhaps Uncle Billy couldn't get through the Yankee lines. Uncle Billy can do anything. He'll bring Daddy back. I know it. Now I have my housework to do. So you just lie quiet till I finish. All right. I'm very proud of you, darling. I'll be right back. <laughs> Rosabelle, are you crying? No, ma'am, Miss Virgin. I ain't crying. My eyes just kind of slipped. <laughs> well, Master Carey will be here soon, and then your eyes won't have to slip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be quiet. Who is it? Virgie, let us in. It's Daddy. Daddy. It's the Lord, he done come. Oh, Daddy. Virgie, darling. The whole Yankee army couldn't stop hush, him. Hush, hush now. Close that door. Virgie. How's your mother? Oh, she's much better. She's in here. Come on. Mother! Mother, look! Robert. Oh, thank heaven. Rosabelle, set another place for dinner. Lin Hurry. Linda. Linda, how are you? Are you really better, darling? I had to live until you got here. And I knew Virgie would be safe. Don't talk like that. You're going to be well, darling. I'll take you out of here. We'll go south. Far behind the lines. Yes. Virgie. And you, Linda? You. Look at me, Robert. Can't you see? It's too late, darling. Linda. Put more wood on the fire, Uncle Billy. Yes, ma'am. Robert. Don't let her see. Oh, Mother, didn't I tell you Uncle Billy would find him? Wasn't I right? Yes, dear. And you don't have to leave right away this time, do you, Daddy? No. No, I'll stay. You see, Mother, he can stay. And the war will be over soon, and everything will be just like it used to be. We'll have our home again, and enough to eat, and and you won't have to be sick anymore. And that's all true, isn't it, Daddy? Tell her it's true. Daddy! Virgie, dear. Yes, Mother? No matter what happened, you've got to be very brave. Can't I be brave and still wish you weren't sick? 
Of course, dear. But Mother won't be sick much longer now. She's going to sleep soon, darling. And if Mother can dream in her sleep. Oh, my dear ones. If there are dreams in that sleep, how will dreamers you Virgie? Mother! Go outside, Virgie. Yes, dear. Wait for me. Yeah. My mother, she's very sick. Rose Bell says she is, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't know she was that sick. Will she get well again? Will she? That ain't for us to say, Miss Virgin. She will. She's got to get well. <laughs> Come here, my darling. What is it? Has something happened to mother? Something very beautiful, darling. And that's how you must always think of it. That mother will never be ill again, nor discouraged, nor frightened, nor hungry. And she'll never suffer anymore. Just think of it as beautiful. <laughs> Billy, no one will bother you. Yeah. I'll return as soon as I can. In the meantime, I'd like to feel that someone was taking care of things. I know, sir. I'll be here, and I'll put flowers on a grave every day. Yes, sir. Thanks. Now, there hasn't been a Yankee patrol through here since morning. There's bound to be one soon. Get Miss Virgie's things ready. You mean you go out and take Miss Virgie, would you, Captain? Yep. Through the Yankee line? I've got to get her to my sister in Richmond. She'll be safe there. But, Captain, it's dangerous. You can't do that, sir. We do lots of things in this war, Uncle Billy, that can't be done. Open! Listen. Yankees, Daddy! Yankees! You can't leave now, sir. I'll have to hide here. Uh, there's a trap door master carry up the ceiling, sir. That'll do. You've got to go, Daddy. They're coming. I can't. It's too late. Uncle Billy, is there a ladder to get up there? Never mind. Push that table over there. Yes, sir. Virgie, listen. Do you remember how Mother always taught you never to tell a lie? Yes. Well, if these Yankees come, you'll have to break the rule, darling. All right. What shall I say? If they should stop here and question you, tell them I was here, but I left an hour ago, and you saw me cross the river. I will. They're coming, Master Carey. Up here. Right over your head, darling. Don't be frightened when they come. Just act as though you didn't know they were here. Go ahead, Master Carey, please. All right, sir? Yes. Now put that table back against the wall. Remember... Act as if nothing had happened. We will. Close the trap door, so they're coming right now. Uncle Billy, have you got your mouth organ? <laughs> yes, I got it. Well, play something, quick. Uh, I don't know as I can. Miss Birds are shaking so. Well, try. Go uh, on. Yes. Just a minute. Well, hello. Hello. It's you again. I'm sorry to bother you. How's the littlest rebel of them all? Fine, Yankee. Just fine. Do you mind if I come in and dry my coat at your fire? No, sir. Come in. Thank you. You two all alone here? What? I said, are you two all alone here? Oh, yes, we are. Your daddy hasn't been around, has he? Yes, he was, but he left an hour ago. Hmm, that's so. Yes, sir. I saw him cross the river. Well, now, that's very interesting. Play something else, Uncle Billy. Uh, yes. Just a minute. What was your father doing here? He came to see my mother. She was very sick, and she kept asking for him. So Uncle Billy went and brought him. And, and then this morning, my mother, she went away. She went? Oh, I'm very sorry. My daddy said I must always think of it as beautiful. Your daddy's right. You see, I have a little girl, too, just about your age. I'd be awfully sorry if her mother went away. Are you warm enough now? Yes, I think so. Good night. Good night. Just in case your father should... What's the matter? You had that table out in the center of the room, eh? Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. No? What are those tracks on the floor? Them? Oh, oh, I must have made them sweeping. The table stood right here, and up there... Is that a trap door in the ceiling? There's nothing. 
nothing up there, nothing at all. You've been lying to me. No, sir, I haven't. Your father is here now. He isn't, he isn't. You know he is. He was here, but he left an hour ago. I saw him cross the river. You tell me the truth. It is the truth. Tell me or I'll give you the worst licking you ever had in your life. No, no. Just a minute. Daddy, get back. I'm coming down. I thought that'd fetch you. Drop down and keep your hands in the air. Now, back up against that wall. You got a pistol? Inside my coat. I'll take that. All right, you can put your hands down now. Daddy, I didn't do it right, did I? Yes, you did. I'm proud of you, Bertie. I said just what you told me to. And you were perfect. I was only fooling about that licking. I wasn't really going to do it. Go inside, dear. Daddy will call you. Take her inside, Uncle Billy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you arrange it so that my arrest won't frighten her? I'll try. Thanks. Got any papers on you? No. I'm not scouting this trip, Colonel. I came home to bury my dead. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Come on. Let's get it over with. I'm ready to leave now. You don't want to see the little girl? I'd rather not. I don't believe I could stand it. You were going to leave her here alone? I was going to take her to Richmond. You can tell her that... Well, tell her the war is almost over, and I'll... I'll be home soon. I wish that were true. Captain... I don't think my country expects me to make war on babies. If you get that child to Richmond, it's all right with me. Here, take this. What is it? A pass through our lines. A pass, but... Now, uh, if you were in a Yankee uniform, you might make it. Otherwise, I doubt it. You have a choice. Of course, you realize what it means if you're caught. You're taking an awful chance yourself, Colonel. War is full of chances. Do you know the Cartwright Plantation? Well, they've got a carriage and a couple of horses. I left a uniform there to be mended by the slaves. If you wanted to steal it from me, I don't know how I could stop you. I won't forget this, Colonel. I hope you get through. Thanks. There's just one thing I want you to promise. In passing through our lines, whatever you see or hear, forget. My word of honor. You'd better leave right now. Virgie, come in. Get out the back way. Follow the woods to Cartwrights. I'll keep my men here for half an hour. Virgie, put your coat on. Hurry. Daddy... Is the Yankee going to help us? Yes, darling. The Yankee's going to help us. You see, you made me think of my little girl. Oh, well, I hope you get home to see her soon. Thank you. Goodbye, Colonel. Good luck, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, little rebel. You know something. You're nice enough to be a Confederate. <laughs> the same road we used to take to Richmond. I know, honey. We're going the long way round. I'd rather not meet anyone if we can help it. Well, you've got a Yankee uniform on. And didn't that man give you a pass to show them? Yes, but the Yanks around here might recognize me. I don't want to use the pass till we get out of this neighborhood. This isn't a very nice neighborhood anyway. Oh! Hold that! Hold that! Oh! Where are you going, mister? I'm taking this child to her father just beyond our lines. Colonel Morrison sent me. Here's our pass. Where'd you come from? Uh, Curtis Plantation. I've left that noon. Why aren't you using the main road? I'm full of artillery, going the other way. Well, this looks all right, but I don't know. We got orders to be on the watch for a rebel scout. Well, they caught him this morning. They did? Morrison's men at his own plantation. Oh. What's your regiment? 72nd Vermont. That's all right, then. The camp just a mile below here. Go ahead. Thanks. Wait! Hold that carriage. Come here, Judson. Just a minute, mister. Daddy, that other man... It's the same one who came to the house. The one who hurt Mother. Quiet, darling. Keep your face covered. Did I hear somebody say something about Colonel Morrison? I did. I just came from him. Here's my pass. Yeah? Whose kid is this? A friend of Colonel Morrison's. A friend on the other side of our lines? Well, there's been heavy fighting south of here. The lines change every day. Let me see that kid. Come on, look up. Give me a light over here. Listen, I have a pass. Never mind the pass. I want to see that kid. Come here. Let me alone. Yeah, I thought so. Ever seen me before? No. No, well, I've seen you. Hold this kid, Judson. Her old man is the most dangerous scout in the rebel army. And you, mister. We want to speak to you, too. Get out of the way! Stop! Stop that carriage! He's a rebel spy! Oh! 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 Get down on the floor. I'm going to stop at the bottom of this hill. Then we'll run for the woods. All right, Daddy, but hurry, hurry. Give me a hand. Now, jump. Come on, out there. 
Oh! Look, there's more of them. They're coming the other way. Stop! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I got my child. Stand where you are. Don't shoot! My child. Hold your fire! There's a little girl with her. Danny, we can still red. Come on. No, dear. I'm afraid we're licked. Don't move, mister. You armed? No. Take care of that girl, Harris. You come along with me, mister. You're under arrest. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille will return with Shirley Temple, Claude Rains, and Preston Foster in Act Three of The Littlest Rebel. Now, a day with Mary Kay, secretary. Yes, Mr. Jones, coming. Mr. Jones' office. In a minute, Mr. Jones. Yours of the fourth received. Right away, Mr. Jones. Sorry, Mr. Jones is in conference. Oh, all right. No, sorry, he's still in conference. The contract you refer to? Mr. Jones' office? Oh, wait a minute, please. I'm coming. And so Mary Kay has quite a day of it. She works late and gets home a little out of breath, because, as luck would have it, she has, that night, a big, a very big date. She hasn't time for a nap, but she knows what to do. She draws a tub of warm water, gets in, and relaxes completely. Yes, Lux toilet soap. That's the soap she uses. She covers herself all over with its rich, fragrant lather. Yes, active lather that makes her sure of skin that's really fresh. She steps out of her Lux toilet soap beauty bath, feeling like a million, buzzers and phone bells forgotten. In no time at all, she's ready, dressed in a very gay frock, off for an evening that's sure to be gay, off with a proud young man who's sure to say nice things. Mary, what makes you so sweet? We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on the third act of The Littlest Rebel, starring Shirley Temple as Virgie Carey, Claude Rains as Captain Carey, and Preston Foster as Colonel Morrison, with Lee Whipper as Uncle Billy, and Frank McGlynn as Abraham Lincoln. Arrested as a rebel spy, Captain Carey was taken before a military court to be tried and sentenced. But he was not alone. Another man stood trial with him, Colonel Morrison, accused of treason, and the sentence passed upon both was death. In adjoining cells of a Yankee prison, two men await news of their appeal, and one night it comes as a Union officer stops in the corridor outside Carey's cell. Captain Carey? Yes, sir. I'm afraid I've got to give you some bad news, Captain. The appeal was denied. Yes. Every finding of the court was upheld. I see. And that... When does the party take place? The morning of the 27th. At dawn. Well, I still have six days. Are there any messages you want sent? I'd be glad to do anything I can, Captain. You've done enough already, sir. Is my little girl all right? Oh, yes. We sent for that old slave of yours. He arrived this morning. He's looking after her. She has a room with Mrs. Robinson on the next street. Thanks. You've been very kind, Major. Colonel Morrison? Yes, I know. I heard you. No chance at all, huh? No. I'm sorry, Colonel. He's innocent, Major. All he did was to try to help a child. The evidence we couldn't overcome, Colonel, was the fact that you not only gave Captain Carey a pass, but he was wearing your uniform. I stole that uniform. 
We couldn't make them believe that. I'll be around, Colonel, if there's anything you want done. Thanks, Major. Well, it was a gamble and we lost. I haven't any regrets. When I think of my own baby, I'd do the same thing over again. If helping a child is treason, I'm afraid I come of a family of traitors. We'll have to hurry, Uncle Billy. Daddy always expects me at 3.30. He says it makes his afternoon seem shorter. Well, that's hard and fast as I keep, Miss Virgie. Do you think they'll keep him locked up much longer? No, Miss Virgie. I expect they take him out pretty soon now. I hope so. You know, last night when I said my prayers, I asked God to let Daddy out of there, and, and I asked him for a new dress, too. And then I thought maybe that was too much to ask, so I said he didn't have to bother about the dress. There's no use taking any chances, is there? No, ma'am. That was right. But if you want that dress, I'll kind of slip a, a little hit in my prayers tonight. All right. Oh, before I forget, Uncle Billy, when we get there today with Daddy, if you look sad like you did yesterday, I'll never take you again. Oh, no, Miss Worsley. I, I, I won't look sad. See that you don't now. We've got to smile to show them that we're happy. Yes, I'll smile. Come on, now. Tell me everything you've been doing. Well... I don't get much news in here. Well, I sewed up a hole in my dress. And this morning, I helped Mrs. Robinson with the housework. She's awfully nice. I'm sure of it. Go on. Daddy, when are they going to let you out? I thought we weren't going to talk about that. Now, tell me... Tell me what else you've been doing. Well, there's a little girl lives across the street, and she has a pony. She let me ride it yesterday. That was grand. And she invited me in for lunch. She's a Yankee, of course, but she said she didn't care whether I was a rebel or not, and I said I didn't care whether she was a Yank. <laughs> Even if there is a war, she was awfully nice to me. Daddy, when she was so nice, and Colonel Morrison so nice, and Mrs. Robinson, why did the rest of the people have to kill each other? I don't know, honey. Perhaps someday when we grown-ups learn to have as much sense as you children, there won't be any more wars. Right here. Miss Virgin, we got to go now. Not yet, Uncle Billy. The major man says so. We got things we got to do. Perhaps you better, darling. Then tomorrow you can come again. All right. Goodbye, Daddy. You're not leaving without saying goodbye to me, are you? No, sir. Goodbye, Colonel Morrison. Tomorrow when I come, I'll do all my talking with you. Mm, you switch around, huh? Well, you see, you tried to help us. So I've made you a sort of... a sort of second, Daddy. Do you mind? Thank you. Nothing so nice has ever happened to me. Goodbye, Yankee. Goodbye, little rebel. Hi, right, Miss Worthy. We got to hurry up fast. What's the matter, Uncle Billy? Where are we going? Listen, that major man, he gave me some money, and he wrote a letter for us to give to some man up there in Washington. In Washington? Yes, ma'am. That's where we got to go right now. All the way to Washington. The major man say it's the only way. But I don't know if we got enough money to get there. Who's the letter to? I don't know. Some man. A big, important man. He wrote his name right here on the letter. Let me see. There it is. What do you say, Miss Virgin? To Mr. Mr. Abe Lincoln. Abe Lincoln? Who he? <laughs> Please, sir, uh, how much is the railroad fare for a colored man to wash? Six dollars and twenty cents. And how much for this little girl? Well, she's a little too tall for half fare. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm standing on my toes. This is my right size. See? Well, don't get on any lower, miss, or you'll be kneeling. All right. Five dollars and sixty cents for you, first class. Thank you. That will be eleven eighty altogether. Eleven eighty. We got that much, Miss Word? No. Mr. O, we have is seven dollars. I'm sorry. Eleven eighty. Now, what are we going to do? How do people get money, Uncle Billy? I don't know. I never had no money. I know. Remember the time Daddy took us to the fair? There was somebody singing in the street, 
and a man with a hat was passing through the crowd. Come on, come on, Uncle Billy. We'll get that money right away. Yep, the cause, white bull. But I like to hear a lollipop. Which cause? Why, the right cause. I don't put no money in a Confederate hat. Oh, right here then, boss. See, I brought along a union hat, just in case. Oh, that's different. Here. Uh, thank you, sir. Yep, the cause. Uh, yep, the cause. Mr. Lincoln will see you now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Come in, please. Come right in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We we had an appointment. Let me see. It's written down here somewhere. Oh, yes. Miss Virginia Carey and Uncle Billy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. President. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Carey. Thank you, sir. And how are you, Uncle Billy? Me? Oh, me. That's fine, sir. Good. Now, let's see. Major Thomas wrote me about this case. Suppose you sit right down over here, Miss Carey, and tell me all about it. Yes, sir. Excuse me, I was peeling an apple here. You mind if I go right ahead? Oh, no, sir. Fine. I'll give you some when it's ready. Well, Miss Carey? Mr. President, my daddy and Colonel Morrison are in prison, and they're going to shoot them. Mm Mm-hmm. Your father is a captain in the Confederate Army, isn't he? Yes, sir. Arrested as a spy. He isn't a spy. No? Do you know what a spy is? I know it's something bad because they shoot you for it. And my daddy couldn't do anything bad. I don't see how he could either with a little one like you. Have a piece of apple. Thank you kindly, sir. Now tell me about it. My daddy went away to the war, and then the Yankees came around our house. And sometimes my daddy came home. Was he in uniform? Yes, sir. What color? Gray. I see. Have another piece of apple? No, that's yours. I had the last piece. That's right. Thank you. Then what happened, Miss Carey? Well, then there were so many Yankees around, my daddy couldn't come home anymore. And then our house burnt down, and we had to move into a cabin, and... Oh, (laughs) excuse me, but that's my piece. You had the last one. I... I beg your pardon. (laughs) You forgot, that's all. Well, then my mother got sick. And she kept asking for Daddy all the time. So Uncle Billy went and brought him home. And then, then she was going away. She said she was going to sleep. I understand. But you mustn't cry. Please don't. I won't. What happened next? Then the Yankees came. And my Daddy had to hide in the garret. And Colonel Morrison came in. He talked to me. He's awfully nice. He has a little girl, too. Just my age. Then he found Daddy. And Daddy told him about wanting to take me to my Aunt Caroline in Richmond so I could get enough to eat. Yes, sir. That's why the colonel gave Martha Carey to pass her. Just so he could bring Miss Virgie where she could get taken care of. I see. Now, on this trip, before your daddy was captured, did he write anything down on the paper or anything? No, sir. Did he ever stop and look at the Yankee soldiers or count them? Or look at the cannon? No, sir. He told me that if we got to Richmond and anyone asked me what I'd seen, I was in honor bound not to tell them. He told you that? Yes, sir. Because Colonel Morrison asked him not to see anything. And my daddy gave his word, and they shook hands. Just a moment. Mr. Harper. Yes, Mr. President? I want you to deliver this message for me. Mr. President? Yes, Miss Carey? You won't let them shoot my daddy and Colonel Morrison, will you? Harper? Rush this by special courier. Yes, Mr. President. You know, Miss Carey, they accuse me of pardoning too many people. But it seems to me that the natural hazards of war are sufficient in themselves without us adding to them. Is this your piece of apple? No, it's yours. I had the last piece. Oh, Mr. President. Mr. President. There, there, now, there. All your terrible fears are over. The note I just sent was to General Grant. Your father and Colonel Morrison are going free. You are, Captain Carey. You're released. You're being 
exchanged. This pass will see you through our lines. Thanks, Major. Thank you. Colonel Morrison, will you please report to your own regiment? I leave at once. Very good, sir. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Captain, I'll say goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Yankee. Goodbye, Rebel. Thank you for fixing things up with Mr. Lincoln. Perhaps we'll all meet again sometime. Not until the war is over, I hope. We'll pray for that, sir. Oh, that won't be long. You seem pretty sure about it. I am. You see, Mr. Lincoln and I talked it all over. I think we're going to fix that up, too. <laughs> <laughs> Escorted by such gallant gentlemen as Claude Rains and Preston Foster, Shirley Temple returns now to our microphone. Her first curtain call in the Lux Radio Theater. Well, Shirley, Mr. DeMille's a pretty tough boss, isn't he? I didn't take any chances, Mr. Rains. I did what he told me. <laughs> we didn't have any trouble, did we, Shirley? Honest, Mr. DeMille, I could hardly wait until school was over every day so I could get here for rehearsal. You're sure you weren't just anxious to get out of school? <laughs> I guess you went to school... Too, Mr. Foster. <laughs> <laughs> what are you studying now, geography? Yes, and history and arithmetic and English. I certainly hope I pass that arithmetic. Shirley, my sympathy. I never really enjoyed life until I got through with arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a bit weak on spelling. But don't get discouraged, Shirley. The main thing is to, well, get a good secretary. Well, I want to thank you all for being so nice to me all week. I listen to the Lux Radio Theater a lot, Mr. DeMille. And I've used Lux soap ever since I can remember. My mother says that we've had it at home since I was a tiny little girl. I think it's grand. Mm. Mother's always no best, Shirley, about everything, including Lux soap. What play are you doing next week, C.B.? Next Monday night, we have a play about one of the theater's most glamorous women. And in the title role, we present one of Hollywood's most glamorous stars, Alice Faye in Lillian Russell. You'll hear Edward Arnold in his famous portrayal of Diamond Jim Brady and Victor Mature as Alexander Moore. Lillian Russell's life was a play in itself, a life of romance, drama, and applause. But we'll tell that story next Monday night in our adaptation of the 20th Century Fox screen hit, Lillian Russell. I want to listen to that, Mr. DeMille. It sounds like a swell show. I'll hear it in Canada, C.B., and I'm off right now for that Northwest Mounted Police premiere. Good night. Good luck, Preston, and good night, C.B. Goodbye, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. You go to the head of the class, Shirley. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Alice Faye, Edward Arnold, and Victor Mature in the delightful play Lillian Russell. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from... Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were B. Benaderet as Mrs. Carey, Avon Jackson as Sally Ann, Warren Ash as Union Officer, Lou Merrill as Dudley, Jack Carr as Tom, Bernice Pilot as Roosevelt, Walter White as Corporal, Griff Barnett as Ticket Agent, Edwin Max as Sentry, and Charles Seal and Dwayne Thompson. The children were played by Bobby Larson, Barbara Jean Wong, Tommy Lane, Dix Davis, Harriet Flowers, Donald Brown, and Pauline James. Here's an important announcement. Uncle Jim's Question Bee, which so many of you enjoy, is now on the air Tuesday nights instead of Wednesday. See your local newspaper or radio magazine for details. Claude Rains will soon be seen on the screen in the Warner Brothers picture, Four Mothers. Preston Foster has just completed Moon Over Burma at Paramount. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>